today. We appreciate uh, the attention to this very important issue. In New York City, the United States of America, we have always been the most generous nation in the world. My parents are immigrants. My colleagues, either their direct parents or grandparents are immigrants. And certainly, the United States throughout history has done its part to welcome people from around the world as a beacon of hope and opportunity. But there's a right way to do things, and there's a wrong way to do things. And right now, what we are witnessing is an absolute debacle put in place by the President of the United States, who decided to implement a policy that is unsustainable, it is out of control, and quite frankly, in a post-9-11 world, it's dangerous. We are here today to pose collectively, united as a community, Republicans and Democrats. Every single elected official on Staten Island has voiced opposition to this national landmark, this former military installation, this national park being used as a facility to house individuals who cross into our country via the southern border. We are extremely concerned as a community for multiple reasons, but predominantly the fact that the city, the state, and the federal government are undermining local elected officials, ignoring local communities, not allowing for any input whatsoever from surrounding residents. They are hearing a united opposition from the local elected officials. And believe me, these days, Republicans and Democrats don't agree on a lot. We know that. And when you are hearing every single elected official from Staten Island, Republican and Democrat, saying that this is not to be happening, I hope, and I, I really hope, that the mayor, the governor, and the president are listening. It is wrong to continue to take open spaces, to take what should be schools, to take what should be assisted living facilities for our seniors who have dedicated their life to build this community. Think about this. Senior citizens who work their whole lives and pay taxes in this country were pushed out of a assisted senior living facility on Staten Island to have migrants move in that just crossed into our country last week. How is that fair to taxpaying citizens? It's not. And what I would argue is my mother came to this country as a refugee. Nobody, nobody paid for her housing. Nobody paid for her food. Nobody paid for health care or legal services. You know what? My parents worked hard. They sacrificed. They followed the rules. They did everything right, and they never cost the taxpayers a dime. That's the way this is. Always, it has always been in this country, and that's the way it should continue to be. Now, there are other issues which we can talk about later, right? The concerns we have about criminal organizations, about drug trafficking, human trafficking, abuses of migrants that are taking this treacherous journey that our president continues to encourage, the, the terrorists on the watch list that have been caught at the southern border and the 1.7 million gotaways that we don't know where they are or what their intentions are. We can talk about all that because that's in the equation as well. And that's what should be considered, national security and protection of public safety. But for the purposes of today, we are saying stop taking away spaces, schools, parks, assisted living facilities from taxpaying citizens who built these communities. It is wrong, it needs to stop, and the mayor needs to stop misinterpreting this right to shelter law. I, I will say it again, that was meant for homeless citizens, homeless New Yorkers. We have more individuals who are citizens of other countries in our shelter system right now than homeless New Yorkers. And you see the homeless New Yorkers still on the streets sleeping on the streets, panhandling in the streets, and they are being left behind as well. It's wrong all around. They're doing everybody in involved in disservice, including the people that they continue to incentivize to take a treacherous journey that we're seeing the drug cartels profiting billions of dollars a year to smuggle these individuals. So nobody is being served by what this mayor is doing. We 
We are a compassionate city. We are a compassionate nation. But we're not a bunch of chumps. And this has to stop today. I want to introduce, well, first let me talk about what I'm going to do. Uh, because in addition to calling on the city, state, and federal level to stop this immediately, uh, we are here because obviously the, the House passed uh, a Border Security Act in May. Um, this is a, a very important bill I think would resolve the problem. The President doesn't want to undo his executive orders. We took action uh, to implement policies in place to be able to support our CBP agents, to allow them to do their jobs, to reinstate uh, the requirement that people apply from, or I should say enforce the requirement that people apply from the next safe country on the other side of the border and wait for their hearings to take place. Um, we can talk about, talk about increasing uh, attorneys uh, for, I mean, judges to have these asylum cases now is two-thirds asylum cases before court were found to be, were, were only two-thirds of them were denied, right? And in last year, 2022, we had more, half of them being denied. That means that the majority of the people that are claiming asylum to enter our country are not legitimate asylum seekers. And what they're doing is actually hurting those people who waited online, that are following the rules and doing everything right. They're actually pushing them further than 1916, which actually established the National Park Service. It says that no natural curiosities, wonders, or objects of interest shall be leased, rented, or granted to anyone on such terms as to interfere with free access to them by the public. And that is exactly what this administration is doing by proposing that an encampment be, be put here or in Floyd Bennett Field. And so we believe strongly that they're already in violation of the law, and my colleagues and will talk further about that, uh, but we will be adding this additional uh, measure put in place as a protection for our community. I want to turn it over to our Staten Island Borough President, Vito Fisella. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman. I want to thank you for, uh, for bringing us all here together today uh, and to repeat, because as you said, we, we are the voice for the 500,000 people of Staten Island, all of us, and I want to credit the elected officials behind me because we've been trying to speak with one voice, but apparently they've been, that voice had been falling on deaf ears. Um, and I credit the Congresswoman for taking, being proactive uh, to ensure that this jewel, this national park is not utilized for migrants or anybody for that matter. And we have active military personnel living on this fort right now. Just a few months ago, we had a press conference across the street. And it wasn't about this. It was that many of these active military personnel families can't afford food to feed their kids. They can't afford diapers to put on their babies. So we try to bring attention and awareness to that fact to raise money and for folks to donate goods so that active military personnel could take care of their own children. And yet here we are, the federal government has no problem saying, we're thinking about putting these folks up for free, feeding them, free accommodations, free health care, free education, free phones, free debit cards. How is that logical? How is that right? And how is that consistent with the American way? About 30 years ago, when this facility, a little more than that, facility was transferred from the Department of Defense and National Parks, the city tried to carve out about a third of it for homeless facilities at that time. And they were overruled. So this is not the first attempt to use this jewel to house asylum seekers or homeless or anybody for that matter. And if you want to put folks here who many have come here illegally and many of them will be sent back, put them in Ellis Island. Why not? I don't hear anybody talking about opening Ellis Island for tents. How about go to Island? But no, we're going to put them right here in Staten Island. People who have built this community. Shore Acres, Rosebank. I grew up right outside Fort Wadsworth. My family's been there since 1947. We were taught to respect what was behind this fence. Now, how can we? I went to PS39, a few blocks from here. Tonight, we will be with probably thousands of people because two blocks from PS39 and one block from St. Joseph Hill Academy, 
which is among other things an all-girls Catholic school, they're talking about putting 300 to 750 individuals in that facility in St. Johnville. Our priorities are screwed up right now. We need to take back what is right. We need to set the stage to give the people of this community who built it, as Nicole said, and do good for them. How are these decisions good for those people of Staten Island? Not one. So I want to thank the Congresswoman for bringing us here, thank her for taking the initiative, and wake up. We were here last October in Travis, and we said the policy was unsustainable. Today is Travis. Next week is going to be another community, and the following week is going to be another. And guess what? We were right. We said that it was going to be unsustainable. While they were welcoming individuals or buses in the Port Authority with champagne glasses. And at that time, it was a half a billion dollars. In less than a year, the price tag has jumped to $12 billion. Who's paying for it? The people of Staten Island? Yes, with no help from the federal government whatsoever. What's their help? Oh, wait a minute. Their help is we're going to open Floyd Bennett Field, and we're thinking of open Fort Wadsworth. That's not help. That's the help we don't need. so critically important during this time at a time when you see Republicans and Democrats not agreeing on much. The fact that Staten Island elected officials, every single one of us, sent a letter last week uh, urging the opposition of this to halt any plans whatsoever. And a person who's led that fight with me, and I'm very proud uh, that of the work she's doing on the Veterans Committee because on the state, on the state side, uh, because right here, and I forgot to mention this, you know, it's not just parkland. This is actually a base of operations for our Coast Guard, for our U.S. Park Police, for our National Park Service. Um, we have Coast Guard members that live on this facility. And as Vito said, it plays a critical role in serving our military members and our veterans. And so I want to introduce our new state senator from Staten Island, representing this area in the port, uh, Jessica Spanton. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the Congresswoman for hosting this today. It's true, this is a very bipartisan issue, and coming from a military family, it shows the complete disregard for how incredibly important military installations are for families who travel all over to find a place to call home. I can say this is not open space for the public to use behind these gates. My kids play on East Shore Little League with the Coast Guard families right down the block at East Shore. People live here, and this is not the right place to put a migrant shelter. We also have the proposal just a few blocks away at St. Johnville Academy, which I graduated from. It was sad enough to see it close back in 2018. I was looked in the face and promised now, not by, not by one, but two mayors, that it would be an education facility. We saw so many delays when it came to that happening due to the pandemic, and I would bet my life that this will lead to more delays if we have a shelter there as well. These are not the right places for these migrants. And unfortunately, we have not been consulted in any way, shape, or form as the united elected body here on Staten Island about where these shelters will be placed. We have found out on social media. We have found out through news outlets. But no one's talking to us to figure out if this is a place that makes sense. But specific to Fort Wadsworth, um, as the congressman mentioned, I am the chair of Veterans Homeland Security and Military Affairs in the State Senate. This could not be a worse location and we will continue to stand united on these issues and I want to thank again the Congresswoman and all of my colleagues for inviting me here today. It is a bipartisan issue and you will continue to see us pushing back against this site. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'd like to introduce the Assemblyman who represents uh, the fort uh, and that is Michael Tenusis. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the Congresswoman for organizing uh, today. Uh, and, you know, the Congresswoman mentioned that her mother uh, was a refugee uh, who came here and worked hard. 
Uh, you know, both my parents are refugees. Uh, they left a war-torn nation. Uh, they're Greek immigrants from the island of Cyprus. They came here. Nobody gave them anything. They worked hard for the American dream, uh, and they were able to succeed. We're not against immigration. We are against stupid decisions. We need to close the border. There needs to be control. The city of New York needs to find a better way and a long-term solution to this problem. And the biggest thing that upsets me is the way the city of New York is going about it. Island Shore Senior Center. I got an email on a Friday at 5 p.m. telling me that the city was going to use it as a migrant shelter. No phone call, no ask for a meeting, nothing, an email. St. John Villa Academy, I got a call from a constituent on Sunday telling me that he saw construction happen right next door to his house and that he spoke to someone that was doing the construction and they told them that they were going to house migrants. That's how I found out. Not from the city of New York. They didn't even tell us anything about here, this base to be used. That is not the way to do things. You do not keep it a secret and then hope that nobody will notice. We need to find long-term solutions and we need to find them now and please close the border. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Michael Riley, Assemblyman of South Shore. Thank you, Congresswoman. Congresswoman. Thank you to all my colleagues here. What does this tell you? A bipartisan effort standing here. It tells you that we lost trust. Trust in our mayor, trust in our governor, trust in our president, trust in our government. You know, a few years back, there was legislation that passed in New York State, and it was to require New York City to hold hearings when they're gonna put together a homeless shelter. Transparency, communication, input from the stakeholders like the people who live around the area. That's thrown out the window. We see three of these shelters coming down the pike, all within a five mile radius. Transparency, it's not there. Trust, how can we trust the mayor, the governor, or the president when they don't even listen to us? They don't even respond to us. They don't even care what the community is sharing with them under the cover of darkness. We're here to tell you that the light is on and you will see in the coming days more people shining light on what you're doing under the cover of darkness. We cannot stand for this. We will not stand for this and we will stand united. Thank you. Assemblyman Sam Pirazzolo, Mid-Island, and Rosemary. Yes, hello everyone. Thank you for being here today. Um, Congresswoman, thank you very much. Uh, you know, a lot has been said about these migrants coming in, and we talk about our family history. My grandparents, too, came to this country legally. My parents came to this country legally. So it's not that we're opposed to migration, we're opposed to illegal migration. And the fact that the city does not even take us into account when they let us know that this is going on is really what the big problem is. And people wonder why there is talk of secession and why Staten Island wants to leave New York City. Well, not only is this a good example, but there are plenty of examples that are being rammed down our throats every day. So the problem is, is that these people are being brought in, they're being put ahead of the line against our own military, our own homeless, our own veterans. And it's almost a cliche thing that I have to stand here and say that and repeat what my colleagues are saying, but this is what happens. Barack Obama said elections have consequences. Yes, that is true. Election have con elections have consequences, and we are facing those consequences every day. And it needs to stop. When the government cannot listen to its elected local government, its local people, there is obviously a problem. You want to stop this problem of the illegal migration, you close the border. It's not even a matter of where do we want to put them. We should not have to put them anywhere unless they have already gone through their hearing, unless they have been vetted, unless we know they don't have a criminal record. 
There has been a procedure in this country for decades for migrants, for hundreds of years, for migrants to come into this country. And right now, the administration is throwing it to the wind. And who is paying for it? So I don't like the term free health care. This is taxpayer-funded health care. This is taxpayer-funded education. You are paying for this. People come up to my office in Albany every year when they want to talk about the budget saying, I need a raise. Well, I'm going to have to tell you now. Either we're going to give this money to the migrants or we're going to give this money to you. You get to decide by how you vote. So think about it because it is a problem. We are your voice, but we need you to stand behind us. And you need to do the right thing. You need to register to vote. And you need to let them know that they need to be fearful of how you're going to react when this happens day after day after day. It's got to stop. Thank you. We're fortunate to have two of our advocates uh, that battle every single day at City Hall. Uh, and first, let me introduce our New York City Council Minority Leader, Joe Borelli. Thank you, Congresswoman. This isn't just about Fort Wadsworth. It's not just about St. John uh, Villa. It's about all 198 homeless shelters. We used to fight over these things. These things used to be controversial. We had a multi-year fight over a homeless shelter as being built right now on Bay Street. It sucks, but homeless shelters are an unfortunate necessity of cities. But when it comes to non-citizens, when it comes to people who come here illegally, we don't even have to deliberate. The response from government, from the president on down to the mayor, is suck it up, buttercup, you're getting a shelter. And here's one. Down the block's another. Soon there'll be another somewhere else. The response can't just be, don't just do here. The response can't just be, where's our check from the federal government? We need both of those. The response has to start tomorrow. And it has to start tomorrow in the Port Authority bus terminal. And instead of standing out there with a dopey smile and a handshake, we need someone out there to say, turn the bus around. Go back somewhere else. Go to Washington. Go somewhere else. Because New Yorkers are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We stood out in front of the Travis Hotels almost a year ago, late September, early October. We stood out there and said, what's your plan? And the plan's the same thing, the same thing a year ago as it is today. It's shut up, you're paying for it, you have no say in it. These people have priorities over you, your school buildings, your parks, your hotels, your senior centers, you're going to pay for it, you're going to like it, and just sit there and take it. So the first thing that has to happen is at the Port Authority bus terminal, where the message has to be, stop, turn around, maybe give them a bottle of water, off you go. Because without that, without the stop, it will never, ever, ever stop. Because the plan here is just to continue this in posterity forever and ever. If you don't believe me, all of you guys with the cameras, ask the mayor, ask the governor, ask the president. What's the plan? We have this guy Borelli saying the plan is for us to just shut up and take it. What's the plan? I've asked it two dozen times. They've never given me an answer. The only answer is we want more money from the federal government. We want more sites. We need more places. Where are we going to put them? That's not a plan. That's an acceptance, an acceptance that we're just going to take it. And it's crap, and it has to stop. Thank you. Yeah. Not only that, I believe I would take a step further and say the mayor is actually incentivizing people to come to New York. Because why would they not come to New York if you're offering them free housing, free food, free health care, free attorneys, free metro cards, free phone, and everything else that they're getting that actual taxpaying citizens do not receive in the city of New York. With that, I'd like to introduce Councilman David Carr, who represents this neighborhood. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Thank you for your leadership on this and on a host of issues. And thank you to all my colleagues for being here today in solidarity on this issue. If you build it, they will come. It used to just be a funny line we'd remember from a movie a long time ago. But we've seen it in action now for almost a year. For almost a year since the bar president and the minority leader and others have talked about since Travis Hotel has opened and we let the first migrants come to Staten Island, 
And that wasn't even the first migrant shelters in the city. But back then it was like, oh, it's just a few hundred, it's just a few thousand. And what have we seen since then? We're going to be opening, if this one were to open and the Villa one were to open and the one in Midland Beach that they announced less than two weeks ago were to open, there would be eight, eight migrant shelters on Staten Island when less than a year ago there were none. Less than a year ago there were none, now there's going to be eight if they get their way. Does that not demonstrate the fact that the more capacity we try to create, the more folks are going to come here? They're claiming even now that this, oh, this will relieve stress on other facilities. No, you're just going to continue to send the message that you should come here. We've got room for you. Just yesterday, my council colleagues and I filed in court in support of the administration who were trying to argue to the courts, oh, you need to allow us to modify the right to shelter. We need to be able to say, eventually we don't have enough room, we don't have enough resources, we don't have enough money, and we gotta, and we gotta shut the doors. How can you make that case credibly in court when you're still trying to create more capacity? The only way that this ends, the only way that we take stress off the system, financially, logistically, socially, is to say we're done and we've had enough. And in combination with the mayor's 60-day eviction policy for folks who are already in the shelters, eventually we will wind down our commitment to those we already have. That's what needs to happen. We need to call it an end, because if we don't, folks are still going to continue to come here. And I'm not passing the buck away from the federal government. The President of the United States, Joe Biden, and his administration have failed spectacularly at one of the core missions that they have as a national government, and that is to secure the border. If they can't even do that, what else good can they do for us? We are not a country unless we have secure borders, and they are failing in that critical mission. Joe Biden needs to set, step up and control the border, and the city of New York, the city government, the mayor and the governor need to say, no more, we're not accepting new arrivals, and then we need to wind down our commitment so we can return back to normal order, and we can have our schools back and our public spaces back and our parks back, and we can make sure that we, the taxpaying citizens of this city, are actually getting value for money from our government instead of seeing it go to others who have no connection to this place. Thank you so much. Andrew Crawford, representing our District Attorney Michael McMahon. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, thank you to everyone behind us today. Uh, as the Congresswoman said, I'm here on behalf of Staten Island District Attorney Mike McMahon, who regrets that he couldn't be here today, but he did ask me to share a statement with you all. Um, as Staten Island's highest ranking law enforcement official, the safety of all our residents and visitors will always be my highest priority. And that includes the thousands who live, work, and play inside the bucolic grounds of Fort Wadsworth all year round. That is why the potential housing of an unknown number of migrants inside the Staten Island landmark for an indefinite period of time, on the front lawn of those who bravely serve in our armed forces, and alongside school children and families, enjoying the, hist the history and serenity of this special place must not come to pass. Housing these individuals here, in a relatively isolated residential neighborhood, with extremely limited access to grocery stores, medical care, employment centers, transportation hubs, and other essential needs, puts them in an untenable position with little potential for success. The brave men and women of the NYPD are already stretched thin and understaffed on Staten Island, as are their colleagues in the National Park Police. Creating an environment where a vulnerable population is expected to survive in a resource desert inevitably creates conditions that will make their incredibly difficult jobs that much harder. I thank my colleagues in government for their advocacy on behalf of the safety and well-being of the hard men, hardworking men and women of our beloved borough and proudly stand alongside them in opposing this proposal. Thank you. We thank the district attorney for highlighting the concerns about public safety and the impact that this will have on our law enforcement from the NYPD all the way up to the U.S. Park Police. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Kenneth Spencer, who is the chairman of the U.S. Park Police Fraternal Order of Police. Thank you, Congresswoman and everyone else standing up here. I'll be quick. Uh, just We've been reaching out to the Congresswoman because of our concerns with our staffing. Uh, across the board, we're 200 officers short with a small agency. That's detrimental to everybody. Here on Staten Island, our officers are very proud to provide the service that we do here on Fort Wadsworth, especially. Uh, we did a we did a site walkthrough yesterday of Floyd Bennett Field, and I can tell you right now, there there it's roughly 40 acres where they're going to put up a camp of migrants. We have no idea who they are, and it's sitting right next to an athletic sports complex. 
with, there's, there's a playground right there, there's a petting zoo right there, and I know right here we have the same type of things that's, that, that, that Fort Wadsworth uh, appropriates for the, the community. So us being as short as we are, at, from a policing standpoint, we have, it's dangerous and irresponsible to put a migrant camp right here in the middle of Staten Island. And it's, it's gonna be detrimental for our policing uh, in what we do day to day. We already struggle to make ends meet on day to day, day, -to -day operations. And it's gonna be tough for us to even handle something like that. So we wanna thank the Congresswoman to uh, address our concerns that we've had. Thank you, Kenneth. And I just wanted to say, say thank you to all the men and women who serve our borough and our country with the U.S. Park Police, as well as the NYPD. Because right here on Staten Island, we have a bipartisan group of elected officials who support and have the back of the blue. Uh, do we, oh, I want to acknowledge Billy Matarazzo representing Senator Lanza, and I also want to thank Councilwoman uh, Camilla Hanks, as well as Assemblyman Charles Fall, who are not here today, but did uh, sign on to our letter so we could say that we have full bipartisan support of every elected official on Staten Island in opposition to any proposed plan to have a shelter here or in other parts of our borough. Any questions? Yes. Uh,